Welcome to Pizza Talk. I'm with Stephanie Swan today of Modernist Cuisine, Modernist Breads, and now Modernist Pizza. Very excited about this because uh, I feel like every day is getting closer and closer to publication. So we want to hear all about it from you, Stephanie. You are the publisher of these books and uh, work closely with a team of brilliant people. So we want to hear all about that. And for uh, some of our regular viewers who have not, or are not familiar with the Modernist series, you know, why don't we start a little bit with, with that and then also tell us a little bit about how you came into being the publisher of Modernist you know, and your background in publishing. Sure. Um, so Nathan published the first book in 2011, which was Modernist Cuisine. Um, and he published it with a collection of chefs and um, editorial staff that he found out here. We're based in Bellevue, Washington. That's um, Nathan Mirabal you're talking about, right? Nathan, Nathan, sorry, yeah, Nathan, Nathan Mirabal. Mirabal. For those, most people know by now, uh, but, uh, but for the, those few who don't, uh, he's the sort of the, the visionary behind the whole project, right? Exactly. Um, so Nathan Mirabold, he basically um, started a team of publisher, a publishing team as well as a photography team and a culinary team um, to research and look into the modernist cuisine of um, the early 2000s. Um, so the first book was published and then he got an itch and decided that he really loved publishing. Um, and so about a year after Modernist Cuisine came out, um, he published Modernist Cuisine at Home um, with a lot of the same team in that, at that time. And then a year later, they published uh, the photography of Modernist Cuisine because Nathan's a huge uh, fan of photography. He is one of our primary photographers. Um, and he just found that our beautiful photography in our books um, would make a beautiful coffee table. Um, so Photography of Modernist Cuisine came out and then Nathan decided that he really wanted to tackle new subjects. And at that time, um, both myself and our head chef, uh, Francisco Magoya, were hired. Um, so Chef uh, Magoya and myself have been there for almost seven years. Um, I'll be seven years in December. Um, wow. which is hard to believe. It is, because um, I made to go about out, nine and years And our first ago, subject when, was bread. Yeah. Um, we both started to, um, at the time when we started tackling modernist bread. Um, so modernist bread uh, was about a five year project um, that published in uh, 2017. Um, and then we also last year uh, published modernist bread in French, Spanish, and German. Um, wow. with our team. Uh, so we worked with free, we worked with um, translation houses and published Modernist Spread as well in languages, um, which was the first time we've ever done it wow. um, in-house. We partnered with other publishers before, um, but it was really exciting to take Modernist Spread and put it into the primary languages, especially German and French, um, that are huge, huge uh, bread fans, obviously. Well, uh, uh, for those, again, who aren't familiar with the books, because not everybody has a lot of people, uh, way more people have them than I think Nathan originally thought would buy, because it's mm -hmm. such an expensive, you know, get. It's a, uh, as I, the first one was five volumes, second mm -hmm. one, which was Modernist Cuisine, which was like everything that was going on then in terms of molecular gastronomy and, and the intersection of food and science. And then Modernist Bread, when, when Modernist Cuisine came out, and I saw that set, and we had a, a set of them at Johnson & Wales where I teach and, and we were looking through them and I said, boy, I hope someday he does something on bread. Uh, Cause I know there was a section in that on bread, but I hope he does a whole book on bread. And if he does, I hope he calls me. And then like a month later, I got a call from Nathan uh, and he said he was starting to put the, together a team and he invited me to kind of participate. And that's how I met you. And so I got well, to- and you're, I think Peter, people. I think you're the very first contract I worked on. Really? Yeah. And I got uh -huh. to-, I got <laughs> to uh, somewhat to the you know to the editorial side and, mm -hmm. and content and and it was fun and I got a visit out to uh, sort of the headquarters of, of modernist cuisine publishing modernist cuisine world and this amazing kitchen you know this uh, well the first thing that the guys did when I got there was made me like a 12 course tasting menu of all their greatest hits you know little single bite poppers that were amazing 
So anyway, that's just background for those who haven't seen it. And I don't know if you have a set uh, in, in your in your home there to kind of hold up and show, but it, it's- Hold up, uh, it's 53 pounds. It, it's heavy, <laughs> you know, like each book weighs about uh, 10 pounds and mm -hmm. it's big full-size books. And when you get them as a set, they come in a case and if you're not ready, you, you can throw your back out lifting it. So you can, I always say lift that case with your legs because it's heavy. Yeah, it's true. Um, I mean, so modernist, one thing that I love is so modernist cuisine, everyone said, oh, it's such a large book. It's 2,500 pages. Well, modernist bread is 2,600 pages. Um, so <laughs> we, uh, we're a few extra pages in modernist cuisine. Um, but uh, yes, it's a very big book. It's five volumes, 2,642 pages to be exact. Um, two, like close to 2,000 recipes, um, over 2,000 photos that we've shot within our studio. Um, you know, it just, it was, while I say it took five years, um, everything is done in-house. Uh, so from the photography to the recipe development, to the editorial, to the design, to even the beautiful stainless steel case that it came in. Yeah. Um, I, I worked a lot with our manufacturer to come up with the design and, um, and make something as beautiful, if not even better than the acrylic case we did for Modernist Cuisine. Um, so, you know, all of those things are part of the overall um, foundation to what we want our books to be. So, yeah, um, but, but it's, most it's people really don't realize amazing. you are your own publishing house. You're not, you're not publishing through somebody else. You are the publisher. Of these, so you Correct. get to make all the calls, make all the decisions, and and control well, how, it, how it flows. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very nice. You know, Nathan is fantastic. I love working for Nathan, and um, Nathan is our founder and our visionary. So um, I'm very fortunate, and same with Chef Magoya. Um, the three of us, with you know Nathan, Francisco, and myself, spend a lot of time together talking about the overall vision. We have about 20 people on staff um, from the, you know, the chef team that reports into Francisco, as well as the food science team, then the editors and designers um, and photographers that report into me, and then also Melissa Lukash, um, who runs our marketing and publicity team. Um, she has a set of team that does all of our publicity and promotional opportunities and social media, et cetera, in-house. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a small group, um, but it's wonderful to have the passion and the excitement that really Nathan brings um, to all of us to um, have the opportunity to do this uh, yeah. amazing project every time um, to, very, the, to the level that we want to, which is you know, really difficult our, now in publishing. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just saying it's such a stimulating environment to be around because he's so brilliant. And then he gathered all these brilliant people around him. And, and, uh, and you mentioned Francisco Magoya, who's sort of the executive chef of the project. Um, mm -hmm. uh, can you say just a few words about him? Because uh, he's got a uh, pretty uh, impressive background himself. Sure. Uh, you know, Chef Magoya has been at Modernist Cuisine um, about the same time as I have. And um, he's from the French Laundry. Um, he worked at the CIA, uh, running the cantina in the, at the CIA. Um, he also had a beautiful chocolate shop called Hudson Chocolate um, out in upstate New York. Um, so he's really been a wonderful creative source for um, how bread came to be. Um, you know, just really artistic and creative and passionate about food. I know that before Francisco came to Modernist Cuisine, he already had published two books, at least two books of his own right. that were award-winning books, James Beard mm -hmm. caliber books that, uh, that sort of, again, brought Modernist Cuisine techniques into the dessert and pastry side of things. So he was perfectly qualified you know, to, to head up the project uh, on when, when the bread, bread book came out uh, because he already knew how to bake and he was already in that mode. And very mm -hmm. few bakers that I know uh, really were had the background in the science side and in the and in the modernist molecular sort of side of of baking so uh, it was a great find to get him yeah I mean the uh, elements of dessert which is probably Francisco's uh, most well-known book is a James Beard award winner 
um, a wonderful backlist title. A lot of people cite it um, for their pastry um, innovation. So yeah, we're um, Nathan um, was very fortunate to bring Francisco to Seattle. Yeah, yeah, it was great, and it, it kind of helped to really pull the whole team together and and drive the project forward. So from the time that he came on board, it was at least what another three to four years before the book came out before we, to put all the pieces together. And then while yeah. you were doing that, oh, and I just wanted to ask the two, you did a um, sort of a single copy version of Modernist Cuisine for people of Modernist Cuisine at home that you mentioned. So the people right. who couldn't afford, you know, the uh, the 600 or uh, I think it's less than that now, but the $600 asking price when it first came out could get, a, uh, you know, a one book that I guess you could say uh, consolidated a lot of the information. Did you do something like that with the Modernist Bread Book? We haven't. Um, you know, Modernist Cuisine, one of the reasons why Modernist Cuisine at Home came out was a lot of the feedback that came from Modernist Cuisine was that um, how many of the recipes can actually be done in your home kitchen. Um, and so with Modernist Cuisine, Modernist Cuisine came out showing people that there are a lot of recipes um, that are easy to use at home. Um, there's some really amazing sauce and soup recipes, a lot of really basics um, that are fun to make. Um, the cheese sauce is amazing. Um, and so that was a real um, difference between Modernist Cuisine and Modernist Cuisine at home, um, was that Modernist Cuisine, there were a lot of innovative um, equipment that you needed uh -huh. in order to make things at that time were that were more um, expensive to find, like a sous vide, yeah. for example, a water circulator at that time was relatively expensive. Now you can get it on Amazon, including a lot of the um, ingredients that were modernist cuisine. You, you had to go to a special shop to buy. They were really hard to find. But by the time modernist cuisine at home came out, a lot of the manufacturers were now, and Amazon itself, um, were growing. Um, so it was a lot easier to find things. And so one of the things that we wanted to do with modernist bread was um, level the playing field. So modernist bread has both, um, has recipes for everyone. Uh, one that it's bread. Um, and so it's a complex subject, um, especially Peter, you know, I mean, bread is um, the lifeblood for everyone. It's been around forever, uh, but there are simple ways of making bread and more complex ways of making bread. Yeah. Um, and that's what we did in Modernist Bread is it runs the gamut from, hey, I just started making bread. I have no idea how to make a loaf um, but I wanna be successful in the first loaf that I make. What should I make? Um, and so, so that was a big difference um, when we published Bread versus Modernist Cuisine. We wanted to be all encompassing. We wanted to make sure that both a chef or a professional restaurateur um, would be able to find the excitement in that project, in that book, just like your home baker. Um, and yeah. I think we were really successful in doing that. And so we haven't made a home version because there really hasn't been a need um, because we need, we definitely have the entire basis covered um, in that project. I see. So, uh, uh, that book's been out for a few years now, and, uh, and by the way, you know, you, yeah, and you mentioned, you know, Nathan's passion for photography, and the, I think the photography is, is, the books are all lush, I mean, that's the best word I can think of, lush with photography, and photographs, real close-up stuff, I mean, it really does take you into almost a molecular dimension of, of how food and food works as a craft and as sort of a, an, an expression of science, um, and then you've been putting out some uh, cattle, uh, some some calendars every year to kind mm -hmm. of celebrate uh, some of the the cool shots from the book. And I think the the photography is probably more people know know you through the photography because it's more accessible and they can see it on Instagram and you know everywhere mm -hmm. else. Uh, yeah. I, are you gonna? Uh, can you show us some uh, some of the calendar shots and some of the photography? Um, sure. And I, I, in fact, and, I'm just um, thinking maybe maybe we should do that. I, in the next I, I wanted to mention too, Peter, was, you know, we, uh, because Nathan's so passionate about his photography, uh, we opened our own gallery. Um, so we, we opened a gallery in Las Vegas um, right. a couple of years ago, and uh, we were so excited about the consumer awareness that we opened another one in New Orleans. 
Um, and now we have one here in downtown Seattle uh -huh. and one in La Jolla. Um, and so all four galleries are exclusive to Nathan's photography. Um, like you mentioned, uh, Nathan really loves to shoot uh, microscopic and macro shots. Um, we also did um, some scanning electron microscope um, photos for bread. Um, so we're really trying to push the envelope on the photography side. Um, we've also traveled and Nathan's taken some really beautiful uh, landscape photos, uh, but everything evolves around food. Mm. Um, so all of the gallery shots are food related in some way, shape or form. And um, it was really during bread that um, Nathan and I talked about how we could get our images out. Um, in a different way because our books take, you know, years, not only from the editorial standpoint, but even from the production standpoint. Um, our production schedule is almost a year um, from the time the files are done to the time we have books um, because of the level of, you know, checking the photography and the schematics of the case and all those things. I mean, you know, Peter, how um, publishing yeah. works. It takes um, a while. Since you're very it, successful in publishing yeah. too. Um, well, so so we thought, hey, let's do calendars. Um, so we started, uh, I believe in 2017, we did, oh yeah, so the year before the Modernist Bread book came out, we decided to tease it with a calendar. Um, so a year out, we published a calendar and it did really well. Um, and so when pizza, when we started working on pizza, um, we decided, hey, let's start putting our photography out for pizza. Um, so the first pizza calendar came out in 2019, um, and it was a great way for us to continue to, obviously we're shooting in our studio um, while the culinary team is producing beautiful um, pizzas and other things, ingredients, um, you name it. Um, so it's a way for us to capture 16 of our favorite photos um, for the year and then uh, put them into a calendar. Um, so we also uh, thought it would be fun to have food holidays. Uh, so there's 60 food holidays, um, five food holidays every month um, to celebrate. And um, they're real holidays. So I always get that question. People are like, is this, you know, bagel? I think today is Bagel Fest Day. So I, I tell everyone, go get a bagel today. You'll see on my social media. So are, are, the, are, are you doing that on social? Is that in, in the social media or is that in the calendar? It's in the calendar. Oh, oh cool. um, So today is Bagel Fest Day. In fact, I was looking at it this morning. I'll tell you um, what. Show us, show us one photo now, but and then, but and 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 then I want to come back to all the calendar photos in the next segment because we're running out of time. And before yeah. we do, I, I have one more question for you. So let just give us a little tease of the of like some. So here's oh, yeah, the there. new cover, um, which I love. Uh, it's beautiful heirloom tomatoes. And it's a pan pizza, Peter. Um, so one of my absolute favorites, I love pan pizzas. So um, this is a beautiful, beautiful summer shot. And then um, here's July. And this was shot in our studio and it's uh, making pizza. So it's, you know, pressing down onto the dough um, with these beautiful hands. And then as I mentioned, here's um, today. I I see. So you both, you've cited the dates of the, uh, there you go, of, uh, is that, is that, the, oh, there's the bagel. That's yeah, National so Bagel Fest Day. So, so this is, is, so the 26th is Bagel Fest Day, and, and what is today? Is today the 26th? Oh, today's the 27th. So, so we're, we're recording today on the 27th, but that, but of course that, this is next year's calendar, right, coming up, or is that? This is, is July next, 21, yeah. 21, yeah, so that's next year. So um, it's interesting, because we just interviewed a guy who's opening a, a he's transitioned from the pizza uh, world into opening a gourmet bagel shop in Philadelphia. Ooh. And um, uh, and so it worked, you know, worked both ways. I mean, obviously everything's so connected. I want, I want to right. look at the more of these photos with you in the next segment, sure. but before we do, would you mind uh, just for, again, going back a little bit, you have your own interesting story. First of all, I know you got to do some travels with Nathan. You were you you were up there with uh, hanging out of helicopters with them, taking photos and things like that. So that must have been an adventure. But everything that that for why he brought you to head the publishing team, it goes back to your background. Can you bring us up to date on you know how you got there? Um, so I have been in publishing for twenty over twenty five years now, which is so hard to believe when I say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> 
Goes and fast. <laughs> It's been an amazing ride. Um, so I've had the opportunity to um, be in New York where, you know, the epicenter, I would say, of publishing um, for about 12 years. And I, before I left to move to Seattle, I worked at Simon & Schuster, um, right in Rockefeller Center. Um, so every day I would walk through Times Square to Rock Center and um, enjoy my day with a lot of amazing people. Um, I had a really awesome experience at Simon & Schuster, and that was my last stop in New York um, until I um, interviewed for a job out here in Seattle with a packager um, called Becker Mayer. And one of the reasons why they were growing was that they were starting to work on a publishing program for luxury books for Amazon. Um, and so they wanted to get someone with both publishing experience, but also um, some creative background as well. And when I was at Simon & Schuster, the last thing I was doing was working on custom publishing um, for retailers. So I was working with Costco on books specifically for them, uh, Barnes & Noble. Um, one of my favorite things I worked on for Barnes & Noble was bringing these really classic books like um, Ernest Hemingway. Um, into these beautiful leather bound editions. Oh. Um, so that's really, that Ernest Hemingway leather bound edition is definitely by far like the biggest thrill of my life from a contractual standpoint and actually getting oh. it done. Um, it was huge. So, um, so it was really amazing to work with these estates and um, amazing companies. Um, so I came out to Seattle um, to work with this uh, pub packager called Becker Mayer. Um, and um, learned a lot. Uh, I mean, working with Amazon, it was really interesting. I started working on um, Star Wars. Um, so the, at that time it was still Lucas. Um, so George Lucas was running it. And we were making these really elaborate um, books around uh, specific places. So for example, the first book that we worked on that I, when I was there was um, about the Sith. Um, oh. So it was called the Book of Sith and it came in this um, triangle that had a lot of bells and whistles. Um, it um, had a motor inside, um, it opened, it had the Sith breathing, uh, you know, Darth Vader. Oh my gosh. Um, it, was, yeah. it was just, it was really elaborate and amazing. Um, and really fun to work with because all of the stories that were created for these books were um, from the perspective of the um, Star Wars character. So we did one on the Jedi, one on the Sith, um, one on Bounty Hunter. And um, at that time when I was there, uh, we Modernist Cuisine came out and there were just a stone throw away from where I was working. And um, my boss, Jim Becker, who was an, an amazing inventor as well, um, and just as, um, just as interesting and innovative as Nathan, um, he thought, oh, you know, we should really talk to the Modernist Cuisine team about creating something special, like unique. We were really into custom, um, creating like luxury pieces for Star Wars um, and Star Trek. We did a really cool book for Star Trek as well. Um, and so we met with them and, um, and about a year later, uh, I noticed that they were looking for a publisher. And so I contacted the guy that I'd met with and kind of had a lunch with him and had talked about like, hey, what are you guys up to? You know, what are you doing? And he had explained that Nathan was really interested in making more of a publishing program. And, um, so I, he was like, you should really try it. You know, you know, it might be really interesting. Yeah. Um, send, send me your resume. I'll send it to Nathan, like, you know, whatever. So I thought, oh, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, and I got a call to meet with Nathan for 30 minutes. And um, like all good interviewing, you know, you go in and especially nowadays, you can go on social media, you can find so many things about somebody. Um, so I started um, planning for my interview like a week ahead of time and um, I started freaking out. Yeah, <laughs> when you read his resume it's pretty intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> you, the first thing I read about was when he was working for Stephen Hawking um, and that I had to start putting things away because I was like okay like 
how am I going to go into a room with this man? I mean, Peter, I'm sure you were the same. You know, I was like, I don't know anything about physics. And, you know, I, I know a little bit about science, but this is really amazing and fascinating. So I just became really fascinated before I went in to meet with him. And we met and um, the funny thing is, um, Nathan had to go on a call after our meeting and we had a really good conversation about publishing in general and um, pretty much everything that I studied for, I feel like he never even asked me about. Um, but it was, we were starting to talk about um, the gallery and like what we would do with photos and things. And he had some really interesting questions, but at the end he had to go um, on the Boston Globe for a call and they, someone came in and said, Nathan, you have a call, you know, whatever. And he's like, oh, I'm going to talk to the Boston Globe. Well, the day before the Red Sox won. And so I told him, I was like, oh, you should tell them congratulations, the Red Sox won. Um, because my husband's a huge Red Sox fan. Uh -huh. And he looked at me and he was like, oh, great idea. And like, it was at that point, I was like, this guy's awesome. Like, it was just, it was just one of those funny things. So I always remember um, my interview with Nathan of like the Red Sox winning, because that was like the funny thing at the end. Well, it's funny. I mean, he's, he's, he's brilliant. I mean, he, he, he worked with Stephen Hawking. He, he was an advisor to uh, Steven Spielberg on the uh, Jurassic Park movies because he's one of the world's foremost authorities on dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and then, of course, and that's and then, of course, he was like the, you know, one of the, the main think tank guys at Microsoft when, during the, the, the golden era at Microsoft. So he's right. got, you know, he, he's, he's, a, it is yeah, intimidating. Chief technology to officer at Microsoft. Yeah, exactly. And I always think of him as sort of the futurist there because he was always thinking five years ahead. And then mm -hmm. on his own, he's a gourmet chef and he has his passion for food. And so you bring all these things together and then you go, how, you know, how can I sit in the same room with him? And then he's a regular guy at the same time. Yeah, and, and I know. I, it was it was really amazing. And, I, you know, seven years, as you mentioned, I've traveled all over the globe with him. Um, we've spent a lot of crazy time on buses and trains and you know <laughs> very strange moments um together and uh you know i wouldn't trade it for the world you know I, i'm so fortunate this pizza experience has been absolutely amazing um you know i, I can't wait till the book's out just like everybody else um but um it's just it's been it's been fantastic well when we we're going to take a little break right now when we come back let's talk more about these adventures that you've had because you've gotten a chance i know that when you're doing the bread book you got to do the dream bread tour meet some of the most important influential people in the bread kingdom and now in the same with the pizza world because while you were doing the bread book you were already planting the seeds for the pizza book so i want to hear about some of those some of the interesting people you've met and some of the great adventures you've had and we'll see some photos and i don't know if you have any any uh, new news on publication date? I know the publication date is always, we'll let you know when it's ready. We but... will let you know, yes. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I cannot wait to let everyone know because that is the number one question that I would say. I'm sure, everybody's like dying for this myself book. Myself and Nathan are asked. Um, and you know, as soon as we know, we will let everyone know. But um, it's, it's, I really hope, I really can't wait till it's out. I think I've everyone... been to the gallery, you know, in Vegas and so many of the photos mm -hmm. hanging at the time were yeah. pizza photos. And they're, you know, incredible. There's like, there's pizza photos that are so good. You want to just eat the photo. So we'll come back. We'll look at all of that. We're with Stephanie Swan on Pizza Talk. We're going to come back uh, in a second with another round of uh, interesting adventures with Stephanie. Uh, join us on round two. We're back with Stephanie Swan of Modernist Cuisine, Modernist Breads, Modernist Soon-to-Be Pizza, and, uh, and a whole series of great calendars. So I know in this segment, uh, Stephanie, you're going to show us some more photos from from the uh, you know from the calendars, and, uh, and but we really want to hear you got us going in the last segment on some of these adventures. You, I know that when you were working on the bread, the bread book. When we say bread book, it's really five books, but we'll just you know it's one big it's it's the encyclopedia of bread, and I'm sure that the pizza one, in a sense, is like going to be an encyclopedia of pizza. So uh, maybe we 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 want to come back and hear a little bit more about maybe what it's going to encompass. But in the meantime, when you were doing the bread book, I always would, felt like you had the dream job because you were, uh, part of your task was to go all over the world and meet the key players and kind of cull from them what would be appropriate to put into the book. What, what, who are some of the, the, the cool people you met both in the bread and the pizza world that uh, 
were kind of like game changing folks for you? Um, well, you know, I mean, Peter, you were one of the first people that I met and also someone that connected me with so many amazing bread people, which I have to thank you so much um, for passing on email introductions, um, stopping when I'd see you at a conference and say, oh, Stephanie, you need to meet so-and-so. Um, so, you know, you really were a conduit for a lot of people for us to meet, um, which, you know, was really important um, because we wanted to find out what was going on in the world, a lot like how Nathan tackled modernist cuisine, he talked to the chefs that were in it. And so I wanted to talk to, um, you know, not only the bread makers, but the millers, um, the agronomists, the cereal scientists, you know, everyone from the food chain, um, that was the end product of bread. Um, and so, you know, some of the key people on, on the bread side, I mean, it was, we had over 250 contributors once all was said and done with modernist bread. Um, 250 what? 250 contributors. Okay, contributors. Um, so, so from a variety of places, um, but, you know, um, Sharon Burns Leader and Dan Leader from Bread Alone, Bread Alone um, yeah. they've continuously been very supportive and part of my life um, for the last seven years since I met them. Um, actually, this is the anniversary of the Needing Conference right now in July, um, and that was my very first conference that I went to, and Peter, you were there. I saw you. Yeah, we spent a lot of time there together, and Sharon, Sharon Burns Leader was there. Sharon, that's where I met Sharon. Um, but, you know, Sharon, I met, um, Richard Miskovich, I met there, Cyril Hitz, I met there, um, Trina Hahnemann, who's an amazing baker in Denmark, um, and then I met Amber Lamke there. Um, that was kind of the start of all of these fabulous people that I connected with. Um, uh, Rachel, um, who owns Modernist or um, uh, Montclair Bread Company, Rachel Crampsey. Oh, yeah. uh, she was doing donuts. I, I, yeah, she did a great donut conference. workshop for that. Yeah. For, they um, were kind of like out of the box donuts. They were great. Oh, the most amazing donuts. I swear yeah. to God, she is an amazing person and an amazing marketer for the donut yeah. world. Yeah. Um, Paula Olin, who I met later from Balthazar Bakery through Sharon. Um, another person that's been in the business for a really long time um, and just really passionate about bread. Um, uh, Jim Leahy, uh, Jim worked with us on a couple of things in his no need bread um, yep. process. Yep. Um, also a really great person that um, I had some time to meet, Apollonia Poilon, um, Apollonia. Did you get to meet now. Apollonia in Paris? Did you get to go to the bakery and see her in so, Paris? Um, one of my biggest thrills was meeting Apollonia at the bakery and then touring the um, production facility downstairs, um, going into her father's uh, library where he had all of these amazing books and art, art pieces because he was a really big collector of art, um, going into the conference room that has been redone but the dolly bread um, sconce that's up above the chandelier I should say. Yeah. Um, and having a meeting with her underneath this, uh, just to me, you know, Apollonia is such a beautiful person, really sharing, um, but very, you know, protective of her world of the Balan dynasty. Um, yeah, it's a real legacy. So, you know, meeting her was just amazing. And just to have her show me the baking facility and, and talk to the bakers. And um, yeah, that was, that's definitely an experience of a lifetime. You know, for and those she's, who don't and know, I've seen her. Um, let mm -hmm. me just jump in for those who don't know who Apollonia Polan is. And for those, I know a lot of you, the viewers are pizza people, not necessarily in the bread world as much, but almost everyone in Europe certainly knows uh, Lionel Polan, her father, who was the most famous bread baker in Paris at the time that he uh, tragically was, was killed in a helicopter crash uh, while Apollonia was still in college. She was at Harvard uh, University and uh, had to actually finish her studies at Harvard and take over operations of the bakery when her, when her father and mother were both tragically killed. And this was now good 18 years ago, I think maybe. Um, it's hard to believe how much time's going. We gotta get Apollonia yeah. on. We're gonna try to get her on Pizza Talk. She, both you and Apollonia were scheduled to come and speak mm -hmm. at the International Symposium on Bread at Johnson & Wales that I host. 
And I was so looking forward to having both of you there in the same place. Um, and so what we're doing, we had to cancel it, of course, because of COVID, but we're rescheduling it for next year. We're going to do it as a virtual. And I've already heard from Apollonia and she said she's back, she's in. So we're going we're to just, you know, beam her in from, from Paris. But uh, amazing story. And, uh, and of course, those who don't know about the Poulain breads, so just look up Lionel Poulain. And she published a new book last year in English. Um, and so she was here a little bit last year uh, promoting her book. Um, really great that, read about that's why um, what that she's done. Part, part the yeah. like right. I, have it, I have it on my shelf here behind me somewhere. So I'll, I'll I do to... too. I have it in my shelf, in my yeah. library as well. Yeah. So, but so I know that, that Apollonia, I mean, when you were doing that tour, I kept feeling like I wish I could be tagging along because you were doing the, the dream tour for, for bakeries. And I know on, on along the way, also eating a lot of really good pizza. You got to go to the sourdough library, right? In, mm, Saint in Belgium, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, that that's like? the exciting thing that I can't wait till I present at Johnson Wales. Um, I was really, really excited about prevent, pre, um, presenting about the travels I did for bread and a lot of the really cool places that are there for um, bread enthusiasts like myself and like you, Peter, um, to show people what you may or may not be able to get to do. I mean, you know, the downstairs of Quellon Bakery is another place that I will highlight. Um, just going to that and seeing the, just the tradition, but also what she's done to um, enhance it um, from what her father and her grandfather did. Um, but yeah, the Vith um, Sourdough Library was really fun. I went when it first opened, and so they were just starting to have, I think they had about 30 yeah. uh, sourdoughs in the cabinet, and then yeah. Um, about two years ago, we were, had the honor of being part of their collection. So, um, we donated, um, uh, Francisco, Chef Francisco and, um, why am I blanking on, um, Raul, no, no, what's his name? I can't remember. The guy from Vip. Oh, uh, says, Carl, Carl DeSmith? Carl, sorry, yeah. Carl DeSmith. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, Carl's the, <laughs> he's, he's kind of the librarian, so to speak. Yeah, Carl's the librarian. Yeah. And so Carl came out. And then when we were at Johnson & Wales, when Nathan spoke a few years ago, um, we did a little um, celebration of ha adding our um, Levon James, is the name of our Levon for the cooking lab, um, to their library. So, so, the, so it's uh, added yeah, now. So it's they're really they're cool. up to about 125 sourdoughs mm -hmm. that they keep alive they, they feed them on a regular schedule and keep them alive and study them and break them down yeah. to determine the the uh you know sort of biological makeup of each one with mm -hmm. how much lactic bacteria and acetic bacteria and all that stuff it's it's an amazing project and i haven't been there yet they've invited me to come but i can't you know i haven't been able to break away and now it's really hard to get there so i was kind well, of and it was really even more amazing and then the sourdough library was I was able to go to an enzymatic um, factory. So on the way there, we actually stopped at where um, they're uh, producing yeast. Um, so I got to tour an enzyme facility, which is wow. amazing, um, especially if you're a nerd like me that just really loves machines and um, watching things work. Uh, is this it in was, Belgium? Yeah, it's in Belgium. It's on the way to Vit. Wow. Um, and it was, it was just really fascinating to go to the, the Parados facilities in, um, Bel in Brussels. So I went to tour their primary facility, um, and their test kitchen, and then went to one of their enzymatic plants and then went to VIT. And, um, it was, it was just a whirlwind of time, but really amazing. Well, as I said, you've, you've had a chance to, to travel to a lot of very cool places. I know. Uh, you know, once you got up and running, you were, I was seeing you everywhere, anywhere I was, you were there, and, and you were in a lot of places that I wasn't, and I wish I could have been. Um, but before we run out of time, I would love for you to take us through some of the photos sure. of the new calendar, or, or even some of the, the greatest hits from the, from the earlier calendars, and, and then maybe tell people how they can get on your mailing list uh, if they want to, or how, do, how, how, how they can get a calendar for, for 21. Yeah, um, so that's the easiest part. They're up on Amazon now, um, and we ship from the Amazon US site and Amazon Canada. Um, so they're $16.95, and they're both uh, both the 2020 calendar, so taking us through the end of this year, 
and the 2021 calendar are available. Um, the 2021 calendar starts in September. So you really only have one month, um, August, until you can start using the calendar. So, um, so, but either way, if you want to finish off 2020 strong, you can get the other calendar yeah. too. And I still have it. I still have the bread calendars on my wall at my office and the pizza calendars. I mean, the, the photos oh, are, nice. are timeless, you know, so there's no reason to get rid of them just because it's a different year. Those are, they're all kind of works of art as you, as your well, gallery. They're really beautiful photos. So, um, so a couple of highlights that I have, um, and uh, this is just a really beautiful photo from uh, Lovely's 5050. Oh, important. Down, uh, Sarah Minnick's place down in Portland. Yeah. Um, so just a really beautiful pie um, with flowers. I really love the detail that Sarah brings to her pies. Also working with a lot of local farmers um, and produce. Um, just a, and just a really amazing neighborhood place. Um, another one of my favorites from our travels is um, Apollonia's Pizzeria in LA. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so we've had Justin, Justin De Leon. Yeah, we've is, had him um, pizza talk. That, that's yeah. his famous crown pizza, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so this beautiful pepperoni slice. Uh, um, and he calls his Frico crust. Um, he's got this really, really amazing Frico that he puts on all of his Yeah, it's a, he's become famous for those shots. And yeah, for those and who are watching, he's, a, he's a photographer. Pardon me? Justin was a photographer. That's right. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, he, so his background a, is also shooting photos. For um, those of you who are, want to see more about of Justin's work, you know, find the uh, episode of Pizza Talk with Justin, and he shows us how he makes that crown pizza. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. Um, so, yeah, so that's one of Justin's. Um, he calls his Frico scorpion tails, God, which I love. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty it's dramatic. Some Wayno <laughs> yeah. muscle. Um, another really amazing opportunity that we had was uh, this is the Chow uh, tomato can. Chow tomato. I'll show you yeah. another picture. That this was done in a studio shot with um, tomato flying everywhere. That's a classic uh, modern type shot. You, you guys are famous for those stopping time and, and, and gravity. And then this is actually in the canning facility. Uh, so Last year, um, Fred Mortati from Orlando Foods uh, arranged a lot for a bunch of American pizza aiolos and pizza aiolas um, and a variety of other people in the pizza biz uh, to tour a bunch of facilities that Orlando Foods supports. And one of them was the Chow canning facility. And it's um, just north of Naples. And so we were able to go out there and tour and watch them during production. Um, so they were canning, they, this time they weren't canning San Marzano's, but they were canning some beautiful uh, plum tomatoes. And then we were able to go out into a field as well and um, see the San Marzano tomatoes with Mount Vesuvius behind it. Oh, um, cool. And that was just um, amazing, especially from this pizza adventure, you know, to go to kind of the source of the volcanic yeah. ash and see these tomatoes. Um, and see Mount Vesuvius behind it. Um, and it was also just amazing because there were, I think around 20 uh, Americans there for the Caputo Cup competition. That's right, yeah. Did you get to meet Nicole Russell on that tour? Did you? So Nicole- You um, just had her on, on Pizza Talk, that's what I was asking. Oh my God, I love Nicole. Nicole yeah. and I sat together during the entire competition, um, taking notes and <laughs> talking about like who was doing what and, um, yeah, it was amazing. Nicole, uh, Laura Meyer, I know she's also been on your show. Yeah. Um, uh, Audrey Kelly um, was there. Uh, so Audrey from Audrey Jane's Pizza Garage in Colorado. Um, Nicole from um, Rockaways in New York. Uh, Laura Meyer from San Francisco. Um, all three of those women are just amazing. Uh, you know, they're just yeah. great. Yeah pizza spokespeople. Um, we were sad Georgia Capruccio couldn't make it. She was um, back home, but um, her father, of course, was there, Roberto. Yeah. Um, well, you know, just, it was just fascinating. One of the things that you, you were going to speak about this at our symposium is, you know, uh, the, this kind of resurgence or surge 
of women talent in both the bread world and the pizza world. That's some of the, the names that you've cited. Uh, you know, these women are really taking center stage now and, and, and as the new generation of pizzaiolos and pizzaiolas are coming mm -hmm. into, you know, coming to the front. And uh, it sounds like you, you've, you've met the, quite a few of them. Yeah, I mean, that was something that I really wanted to, to make an effort um, as a female um, during the bread book was finding women that are just amazing bakers and that I wanted to highlight and find out more about them that might not have had them the exposure um, at that time. Um, and even now, um, like, you know, Allison Prey, amazing baker from Standard Bakery in, uh, Port in um, Portland, the other Portland. Yeah, Portland, Maine. Maine. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, now with, uh, you know, um, Orlando Sales has started Women in Pizza as a group um, for, I, I think, actually, Laura, Audrey, Nicole, um, Nicole Bean, uh, Georgia, they're all kind of the founding women, I would uh -huh. say, of Women in Pizza. And it's just really great to see they're all amazing women and they're all so supportive. And um, they have learned by learned from a lot of amazing people. You know, Tony Gimignani, um, he's had both Laura and Audrey worked for him. Uh, he's mentored um, a lot and so, of times. Yeah, and so it's great to see them have their own places and, and really take this on as, um, as fantastic pizzaiolos. Same with Georgia. You know, Georgia worked for her father at Keste, and now she's at Don Antonio. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's really fascinating um, and also great to see so many amazing women doing things. And then, like you said, um, on your program, you know, highlighting their own talents and where they've grown. And I think that it's only going to grow, you know, we're, we're, I feel like we're in the golden age of pizza now, maybe in, 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 in all of history. Uh, and it's in the flowering of the golden age because yeah. there's more and more great places coming and the, you know, and also imbued with this, uh, this other quality that women bring to it that uh has changed well, it's it like the details that i showed you from sarah's pizza with the beautiful flowers and the color you know it's just it's it's a lighter feminine touch yeah. but it's delicious like you know it's just, it's absolutely delicious laura meyer um you know she made a pepperoni pizza that won the americana cup in the caputo competition last year yeah. um and it was a pepperoni pizza but the way that it was made was absolutely delicious. I I I got to taste it. You know, it was it was fascinating. You know, um, Tony and Pete Chappelle, who was on your show, and Scott yeah. Weiner, they were all judging. Yeah. And um, there's just she's she's a she's a rock star. You know, yeah, you should. That's right. I if you can take a class from her, do it. You know, go watch her. Every pizza expo, she's out there showing people how to make pizza. She is a soft and wonderful person and she will teach you how to make great pizza that's right and uh and she does she rocks she really does um mm -hmm. well you've had an interesting last seven years since you've since you've joined <laughs> the modernist team i mean you had a great sort of life up to that and then all of a sudden you know have uh have gotten to do the dream tours that we all want to would want to be in your suitcase traveling with you uh and met some cool people and we can't wait for uh, for the modernist pizza book, do you, can you anything you can say in terms of like how many volumes it might be, or is that still to be determined? We haven't um, we haven't announced how many volumes or the price or the on sale, but it'll follow in the vein of modernist bread. Um, you know, there's an amazing history around pizza, um, just like bread, and so you know Scott Wiener's tackled a lot of great history on his um, show. Yeah. Um, the, and the pizza tours uh, site. Um, so there's really some interesting history about pizza, not only in New York, but also in Italy and globally, how pizza yep. came to be. So, you know, history will be covered. Um, the fundamentals, just like we did in bread, um, ingredients, and then the process and recipes. Um, so, you know, very similar to bread, just a little different. Um, but, you know, 
for us, all of those pieces are very important. Um, and if you enjoy history, it's going to be a really wild ride. So it's it's a really good it's a really good well, uh, thing to be working on. I can't wait. I'm sure um, all of us are looking forward to seeing the because really it will be the summation, uh, you know, of everything that we know about pizza up till this moment, uh, and uh, and who knows what's to come. Um, be, before we we sign off, can you show us a, one more photo from the calendar that uh, that you think would be f uh, fun for us to see? It, it kind of yeah, I'll show you bit. one of my favorite places in Italy. Um, this is Pepe and Grani, which is in Caiazzo, uh, Franco Pepe. Franco Pepe's place, yeah, that has been getting um, international acclaim, obviously. What is he doing there that's differentiating him, you know, that's pushing the envelope of pizza? He, he's got, he, he's, he's a game changer. Well, he has a tasting menu, which I think is amazing, um, because you don't really think of, when you go to have pizza, you're going to have multiple courses of pizza. Um, but he does it really well. You know, it's, it's well thought out. It's beautiful um, as far as the palette and yeah. the look and feel of everything. Um, he's, he's a real master of ingredients. I mean, Caiazzo outside of Naples um, in Caserta, in the region of Caserta, it's not far from Naples. It's close to where a lot of amazing producers are for for everything, you know, cheese, tomato, meat, you name it. Um, and so he uses the ingredients that are there and he's very fortunate that the ingredients are there are amazing. Yeah. Um, but he's just a master and his um, pizzas are are worth it, you know. Let, let us see that, bit. Let's see that shot one more time and because that'd be a great memory to take from today's uh, session. Yeah, that is, that is quite a gorgeous pizza. Yeah. I'll All see right. if I have well, one more to show you, Peter. That's my favorite. Oh, here's another. This is, um, this is actually, if I had to go, this is, this is Franco Pepe's. Um, this is my favorite pizza. What, it's what a are, puree. It's kind of uh, his take on a margarita. A little bit of a, a deconstructed the, margarita. <laughs> basically a deconstructed margarita yeah. um but the purees of the tomatoes are so beautiful it's almost like a tomato confit um but you know just uh, it's the details you know yeah well see and then like like people like like the visionaries like franco pepe that what they're doing today is going to be on everybody's menu within the next couple of years he's changing he's raising the bar for everybody and everybody's following which is kind of the most exciting thing because people are always asking me, well, what's next? What could possibly be next in pizza? Uh, you know, oh, yeah. we've seen every style, we've seen every explosion. Well, there's still always something new. And uh, and I know that you- That's at, the exciting modern, thing. Yeah, at the Modernist team, you're always about what's new and, and, and how to get there and to show us again, uh, you know, how it works. But I, I think the when Nathan and I talked, one of my takeaways was, you know, the his notion that the, the craft and the science you know, coming together, kind of forming a nexus in which something else, you know, amazing can happen. And uh, and I think that that's what you guys are on the cutting edge of. So thanks so much for being with us today and sharing. Uh, some thank you, Peter. It's such an honor. I'm and, glad uh, I could talk about a lot of the wonderful people that I've met through my journey. And like you said, I, I really feel like I have a dream job and I'm really fortunate and um, I can't wait for this book to come out so that everyone can see it. But for now, you can check out the calendars and enjoy the photography. And um, hopefully, we'll be seeing each other again in live form at a pizza expo in the in the near future. And also, you'll be back at our Johnson symposium Wales. at our bread symposium next year when we do when we do the virtual. And uh, you know, so I can't wait. Yeah, we look forward to it. Stephanie Swan, thank you so much for being with us. Thank all of you for watching today on Pizza Talk and uh, join us at the next episode. You never know who's gonna be on Pizza Talk. We'll see you there. Thanks, Peter. Bye-bye.